Greetings from Taco Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you yet again another Ultimate Fighter Live episode recap right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Ultimate Fighter Live episode recap. Now, I know this video is late, but I'm just going to try my best to give you all my thoughts on last night's fight. Um, so, this is Ultimate Fighter Live Episode 8, and the main, the main event in this week's episode, the main bout was against uh, Sam Cecilia for Team Cruz and Chris Saunders for Team Faber. So, of course, like all my recaps, I'm going to address um, both fighters, their training process, and then, of course, my thoughts on the match. But... Before I do that, I do want to comment on the special guest appearance in this week's episode by uh, Ronda Rousey. Um, huge surprise seeing her in this week's episode, um, but I was glad to see her. Um, nice change of pace, and I thought it was very interesting to see to see what she could teach to the rest of the guys uh, that were on Team Cruz. Um, I thought it was very interesting seeing her her judo style and seeing some of the guys try and pick up on some of those things I thought it was really cool and I thought it was a it was an interesting thing because um, as you all know Ronda Rousey is um, um, women's champion in strike force and so while they are different organizations and while her fighting style is somewhat different than what we've seen from the guys of Team Cruz, it was nice to see how, you know, they, they kind of bounced ideas off of each other and were able to work together. I thought it was very cool. Um, I thought it was a very rare, a very rare and a very unique um, example of collaborative MMA, collaborative training. So I thought it was kind of cool. Anywho, but now let's talk about the fighters um, in this week's fight and let's talk about their training because, okay, now, this was kind of weird, and I don't mean weird in a bad way, I just mean, I didn't expect this. Okay, now, you have Sam Cecilia for Team Cruz, which, of course, that was my number one guy to win the whole competition, and we saw that Sam got into the tough house with an eight-second knockout, you know, one-hit knockout, got him in. And then on the other side, you have Chris Saunders for Team Favor, who was the... He was the second, he was, I think he was the, yeah, the, the second to last fighter picked, and I think he was the last fighter overall for Team Favor. But the thing about the two fighters that interest me the most were the fact that this was the first week, I think, where we had almost strictly striking fighters and and, and and I don't mean I don't mean that these guys can't do more than just striking but what I'm saying is their training focused almost entirely on striking which was which was kind of different it was, and it was kind of weird you know um, I believe that Sam has had some experience with wrestling and I believe that he actually wanted to lean more towards that in the fight but the thing is the manner in which they trained which for Sam his training process with Dominic Cruz and with the rest of the coaches were that because he throws heavy-handed punches they wanted him to be able to wear down Saunders from the from from the from the get go, from the start, from the beginning of the first round, they wanted him to land as many of those heavy punches as possible so that they could wear Saunders down so that by the time the fight progressed later on into towards the end of the first and then into the second round, Saunders is actually fighting uh, Sam's fight. So at that point, Sam would be pushing the pace of the fight. That was Sam's strategy going in. And then on the other side of that, you have Saunders, who's a technical striker. And the one thing that him, Uriah Faber, and their coaches wanted to focus on was his ability to stick and move. Because 
what Saunders would have to accomplish is, Saunders is being a technical striker, which means he pays very close attention to where he strikes, he pays very close attention to the combination that he, th the combinations that he throws, and he tries to exact damage in all parts of the body. So, him coming into the fight offensively in that matter, but then his defense was to was you know stick and move. When Sam goes to throw those heavy punches, don't be there. You know, it's, it's, it's the old philosophy. You know, best defense is just not to be there, and so. That's that's Saunders' plan going into the fight, right? Okay, so we're talking about two fighters, two training processes, two game plans that both concentrate on striking. And so let's talk about the actual fight. When we get into the actual fight, I don't know what the hell happened. It's like, I don't know what Sam was doing. Saunders, I felt was doing the best job in executing his game plan. You know, he was sticking, he was moving, he was, you know, throwing strikes. But Sam is swinging like a what? You know, swinging like a madman. He's just throwing these heavy punches and he's not hitting anything. You know, he's wearing himself down. I mean, Sam tired himself out halfway through the first round. And I mean, hell, he damn near got knocked out when uh when Saunders hit him. And Sam dropped to the floor, and when Saunders jumped on top of him, Sam was able to recover. So, I don't know what the hell Sam was doing. He didn't, he didn't follow his game plan. You have Dominic in his corner screaming to him. Uh, the, there was a moment in which Sam had Saunders pressed up against the cage and Dominic kept telling him go for the single leg go for the single leg go for the single leg he must have said it at least seven fucking times I counted and Sam never did it and he's throwing all these heavy punches he's not he's not fucking hitting anything Saunders is has complete octagon control he is moving within that octagon freely um he doesn't even seem phased by Sam at all and then, I mean, so the first round pretty much went like that. Now in the second round, granted, I'll give Sam his just due. In the second round, Sam was able to, you know, land a few more of those heavy punches. But at the same time, Saunders was able to defend himself against it. Uh, so I mean, Saunders only got caught like once. And I mean, every time Sam tried to, you know, be aggressive, Saunders was able to weather the storm. Now, I will say this, I will say this, Sam did a spectacular job transitioning. Every time they got to the ground and Saunders tried to get the uh, offensive position, Sam did a spectacular job in getting back to his feet. Sam was able to transition so smoothly and so quickly, I thought he did a really good job with that. But at the same time, Saunders did a spectacular job striking. I mean, he was he was picking his punches, he was sticking them, he was slipping kicks in and out of Sam. Sam could not defend against those kicks at all. Those low kicks, Sam couldn't do anything against them. Sam got caught, I think, once or twice with a high kick. Um, it was only until the second half of the second round that Sam was actually starting to dodge those kicks. So Saunders was slipping them in. He was getting good strikes in. And granted, he wasn't throwing heavy punches, but it's like I it's like I said, Saunders landed more punches. Every time you land a punch, that's a point on the scorecard. Every time Saunders was able to push Sam against that cage, he was throwing knees. He was throwing knees. And every knee that's landed is a point on the scorecard. So when he got down to the judge's decision, they gave it to Saunders. Now, I remember Dana White was talking about how he thought it should have went to a third round. And I would have favored a third round because, of course, I was pulling for Sam. But even I had to admit, Saunders won that fight. He did. Um, he was the better striker. Granted, like I said, Sam had the best power. That's true. But Saunders landed the, the more kick. I mean, uh, the more strikes. More, more kicks and more punches. He landed more strikes. Every strike point on the scorecard. So I thought Saunders um, I thought Saunders got a, a legitimate win. I thought he earned it and um, 
I mean, it was still a good fight, though. I was just highly disappointed in Sam. I guess I just expected so much out of him. Um, maybe my expectations were too high. Um, but, hey. So, as far... Well, okay, so my number one guy is out. So, I already got one guy that's out of the competition now, which is Sam. Um, of course, I still got Mike, uh, Mike Chiesa. He's still in the competition, and next week, my last pick, uh, Mike Rio, goes up against, I believe, Andy Oakley. Yes, um, which I'm actually really looking forward to that fight. Um, I want to know what, to be honest with y'all, I, even though I'm pulling for Rio, I'm much more interested in seeing Oakley fight because, to me, he is a diamond in the rough. He he he's the quiet type i mean granted we have seen him you know get kind of emotional and whatnot but i don't know anything about him you know he's a mystery to me and i just want to know what he's capable of so of course for next week i am going with rio but should be an interesting fight and as far as predictions that'll bring my predictions to what is that five and two for predictions so hopefully we can make it six and two. Anywho, but that's going to wrap it for this week's recap. Once again, I apologize for this being so late, but my schedule has been hectic. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. But with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief. I'm signing off, and until next time, peace.